and welcome back to Let's Play Tales of Vesperia. Last time we entered Zaude and uh, this time we will try to figure out where the heck we're going. Now off screen I did actually do some digging though I didn't actually uh, advance through any story things I just figured out what the main gimmick is and it's not something I'm looking forward to. Now good news I guess sort of is one we can actually leave this place i found out that the ship is parked outside so uh that's good to know secondly uh there's no mimic here that's a zaude orb which is necessary to advance uh the fact that they're giving us a bajillion items right off the bat isn't scary at all uh just saying um sure why not Special gel, yeah, that's not ominous. Them giving you a bajillion really, really good items. Whenever that, whenever a game does that, that's always a really terrible sign. So yeah, should be fun. Again, all I know is the boss of this place. I don't know much about the actual navigation of it. Uh, over here we have this little thingy. We can place the orb, and if hit with the sorcerer's ring, it changes the water level. <laughs> Yes, we got a water temple, uh, and I'm not really sure how to feel about it, to be completely honest. Really not sure. I assume hitting the red sphere lowers the water back down, but I haven't tried it. Hey old man, there's something I've been wondering. What? How come the Royal Guard is so loyal to Alexei? Well, you did you know that most of the Imperial Knights are taken as apprentices from the nobility? Yeah, I wish I could forget. Well, the Royal Guard protects the Emperor, and they've, they're made up of the finest soldiers and Imperial Knights. Hasn't it been several years since we've had an Emperor, though? Exactly. In that time, the Commandant's cleverly made those Knights into his own personal army. Doesn't seem like that'd be enough to turn them into such little lapdogs, though. Well, the ideals he offered them were attractive in their own ways. Lead our Empire to prosperity. And what have you. I'll bet there were a lot of idealists in their ranks. Like Flynn, you mean? It'd be nice if all of them could, could have figured out the truth on their own, like that one. Testing a theory? Nope. Um, obviously, oh, the blues to help you get back down. Obviously, we have to lower the water at some point. That looks friendly. This is a door. Hello, Mr. Imperial Knight. I am not having any of that. <laughs> um, was that a green save point? Uh, actually, no. I, I want to double back. I want to check something really quickly. Obviously, because we got a cutscene. This means story progress. Uh, I was wondering if we could actually go over here. We can. Okay. Uh, so this loops around. To the main hall. Oh wow. <laughs> these guys just look nasty. Not even gonna hide the fact that these just look terrifying. I'm gonna go a little crazy here. It's not too crazy, okay? Uh guy gigafish. Weak the fire. Ow. Um I think I took item pro off to equip special, so we don't actually have the fast item usage. Uh, Lizard Man, what do you got? Weak to wind. Let's see. And lastly, this crab thingy. Uh, where's the magic lens? Magic lens on the crab, the water gunner. Weak to fire. So we got fire, fire, wind. Uh, thus logic would dictate maybe the Flamberg or something like that. Um,. The one wasn't weak to it though, so it's like, eh. Wait, when did we get this? <laughs> like, I'm legit trying to remember when we got this. My memory's not bad, apparently. Um, also, when did we get this? <laughs> so, she hasn't learned that quite yet, so, um... Oh. Huh. That must be what she had during the boss fight? I don't know. Um... I'm just looking at skill stuff. Uh, I have learned those, so... I guess second star then. 
Again, I don't remember picking that up at all. Uh, didn't I get another thing for Rita, or am I mistaken? Uh, doesn't it seem like it. Yeah, this. I mean, <laughs> it halves his health, that's kinda bad. Uh, when I'm trying to farm low-level enemies, that might not be a bad idea, though. Breaker Bow, once TP Condition 2 is learned, I'll have to remember to equip that. And yes, I am planning ahead, but clearly, because of me navigating menus right now, <laughs> as opposed to before the video, uh, yes, I'm clearly prepared for this. So, no fail strike. I'm actually wondering what party I should have for this area. If a more physical party would help, or if it would actually not help. Or if having a mage would actually be good. I mean, obviously we want a stealth in a party. Also, by the way, I actually didn't address it last time, but the fact that he actually went around the solution was not what I expected it to be. You know, the whole, oh, we're just gonna tie this to your life. Yeah, that wasn't ex how I expected it to go about. Again, I just expected it to be more like, oh, you just have to use a blast in now, not, you, picked the wrong you know, people to fight. your child with full moon powers. So, that was a little bit unexpected, and I'm not sure how to feel about that, really. This looks kind of cheesy, actually, the animation, I mean. Uh, well, that's why it's special. Also, this also brings up the question, where's Repeat's special weapon? Uh... I have no idea. That did not go as I had planned, but he's stuck on the railing, so we're fine. Take pot shots at him until he's actually stunned. Ooh, now's our chance. It doesn't seem fair. Yeah, it's, it's all about fairness. Uh, level 51! Okay. I'm trying to figure out who to target first. Maybe the regular fish. I have a feeling they're going to be fast, but not powerful. So they might be good to take out first. It's a little bit of a dilemma that, you know, you run into a lot in RPGs of what's the first enemy you take out. Do you take out, you know, the one that's actually being an active threat, or do you take out the one that's that has potential to get a lot of hits in, even though they don't do as much damage? It's just kind of a perpetual conundrum. Also recover. Uh, except that's totally going after Cell, except Raven now. Well, that enemy was actually really nice for turning the other way. Uh, Peter Fang, it's down, and this one should be going soon. 4,000, rounding down. Oh, I pushed B, I know I did. <laughs> You know what? Actually, Raven, what does he have? He has the Emerald Ring. Uh, I'm going to give him this. Spirit Bangle, though he probably won't be defeating too many enemies, unfortunately. Hey, it might make a difference. You know what? I should probably equip someone with an Aquamarine, knowing that we're in a water dungeon. Um, where'd the Emerald Ring go? There we go. Uh, yeah. So she's our primary healer. Uh, enemy damage times two. Not sure if that's worth it. Actually, that that'd be good for Rita. Uh, slightly reduces casting time. Hmm, I don't know. I'll think about that. All right, here we go. Yay! All right. We did it! Was there anything else we could do in this first area? I don't remember if there was. Well, there's this path over here. Yeah, so it's the one place that has a save point. I figure maybe we should check elsewhere first. Just intuition speaking. Um, unless that's reverse psychology. I did not think that was a back attack. That looks like a side attack to me, but hey, we can get, uh, see more characters with a change. Okay. Uh, did I equip the thing that boosted the rate of our over overlimit? I actually wasn't really paying attention. Uh, which one was that even? 
sure. That might actually be helpful. He might be using Overlimit a lot. And wow, that's actually a good increase. That's actually a pretty good increase. Um, okay. Why am I walking? Uh, for some reason it won't let me run. There's no way we're gonna lose. What I'm wondering if is if it's an input thing. Like if you put in a certain input then you basically have walking speed, which actually could be helpful in some cases. Oh. Is that bar next to Yuri's portrait? Guy above the words are sorbet. Is that actually like his gauge for how proficient he is? I kind of hope it's not. <laughs> Cause that's a pretty sizable gauge. But I mean, it would be kind of typical for this game to have something like that involving cooking. What was it, a lemon? Life gives you lemons. Make a gel out of it, apparently. <laughs> um, that seems to be everything on this upper level for now. So I think we are safe to... That guy respawned really fast, unless I ran around him. I think I ran around that one. So yeah, never mind, actually. Okay, now we're good to go, I think. Um, what's over here? Oh, okay, hello. Uh, not what I was hoping for, but I'll take it. Better than the first strike. Have we fought these yet? We have. Uh, these hurt, actually. <laughs> um, a lot. <laughs> Okay, 700 roughly on average. 900, so yes, on these we will want to use the Flamberg because it's fire element. That is a significant increase. Um, 200, like roughly 200-300 per hit. Uh, that goes fast, that adds up. And if I use like destruction field, that would do a ton of damage, but I don't really have that equipped. Uh, just because as an art, it really isn't as good as that one. One wolf charge, I think, is what it was. So, yep, over level 3. That is actually a pretty significant increase to how fast that charges up. I actually am wondering something. Uh, about cooking. Like, how long you have to wait until you can cook again. It looks like every battle, so that's actually not too bad. There's a cooking shortcut menu? <laughs> okay. Pineapple heals TP, which actually works out rather nicely, I think. Uh, sure. Yeah. That works. Now, when we get back to that central area, we'll have to make a choice of whether we want to go up, or if we want to go straight. Uh, since there's a save point... It feels like it's- okay, I just want to double check this place. That's like one of the healing kind. That is a healing save point, so if we wanted to level grind a bit, we have that option now. Um... But because of that, I actually kind of feel like exploring around first, and it looks like that's paying off because this doesn't seem to lead anywhere. We have a great opening now. This ain't a bad strategy either. But there's a lot of uh, treasure and experience for us before we go and get healed. Are these different? Yeah, they are. Uh, so many new enemy types. It's funny to me though that enemies drop magic lenses, so that you don't have to worry about that. I was actually reading that it's actually really good that the title for not using an item is actually um, accessible through a title. I mean through a skit. Uh, yeah, it's unlocked through the skit itself. So, that means you actually can just watch the skit and get the title through like a skit viewer. Because otherwise... Uh, the achievement for scanning every enemy with a magic lens is actually... It would have to be done in a separate playthrough because... You actually don't... 
uh, have access to magic lenses if you're going for the item hater title for Yuri. Uh, but there's also, I think, is there an achievement for all titles? I think there is. So yeah, like, if it wasn't for the fact that you could just watch the skit and kind of get it through that way, um, you would have to do, a, a, like, three other playthroughs if you mess up the magic lens thing. Um, we'll destroy them in no time. So I'm actually been, I've actually been kind of contemplating how many playthroughs this game would actually take if you actually know what you're doing. Say you actually were more on top of it than I was, and actually did magic lens every enemy. Uh, say you also didn't mess any like, uh, other than the item hater title, which is ex mutually exclusive from the, uh, Magic Lens achievement. You could potentially, um, get almost every title except Yuri's, uh, item hater title. I think you can get most of them, if you know what you're doing. Apparently Dark and Forest is just toughy. And I've seen things saying Dark and Forest is actually tougher than like all the secret missions. So that's not scary at all. Why does he have such low defense? Uh, I can't figure this out. Man, what a pain. Why would anyone bother to set up such complicated mechanisms on the ocean floor? It's a common way to keep intruders out. The Shikos ruins were the same way. Places only certain people could enter, that kind of stuff. So only people who know the correct steps can enter? Exactly. But if we rack our brains a little, we should be able to figure it out. So why haven't we figured it out yet? You tell us, Captain. You're the master puzzle solver. What? Uh, since when? Since now. So put on your thinking cap and figure this out. Ugh, I can't believe this. Hmm. <laughs> um, what was I saying? <laughs> I kind of forgot. Uh, where does this go? Oh frick, this is by the front door, isn't it? Okie dokie, back in we go. <laughs> um... So I'm actually a little bit curious what happens. I'm, I'm a little bit curious. What happens if you try to approach the knights outside? Whoa! Shh! It's going quietly. Okay, that's what I figured. So, um, back to what I was thinking about. Uh, there's also an achievement for defeating Barbos on their level 15, which obviously you want to do on easy mode, where you can't earn grades, so you have to actually uh, figure that out, how you work that. What else? Uh, there's a 15 hour achievement. Oh, that hurts. There's a 15 hour achievement, so uh, you have to factor that in as well. Um, so, uh, that's counting like the low level run if you do that with the speed run, which I assume is a good idea, because you'll be avoiding fights anyway. Um, I'm legitimately wondering something on that note, though. Uh, if you have the 10 times experience, and even if you avoid most encounters, would you actually go above 15? by Barbos. I'm actually a little bit confused by the logistics of some of the achievements in terms of how many playthroughs you'd actually need to do. I'd say a minimum of three if I had to make a guess. Um, maybe. If you like absolutely 100% know where you need to go, I think you could probably do it in three playthroughs, but oh, that's pushing it I feel like. Um, sure. The dog's looking a little spooked. Why do you look so happy, Rita? Who, me? Repeat being scared makes you happy. Huh. I have no idea what you're talking about. He's just not too good with water, okay? Being at the bottom of the ocean is a little tough on him. A little tough, huh? Hmm. <laughs> okay, so we have cleared out this floor. So all that's left is well to figure out what the heck this is. I don't even know what this is. I don't care what rock you crawled out from. Bring it. <laughs> that's actually a really good battle quote. That was... I actually do wonder because again I remember hearing something about that some things were Too kind strong. of made up as they went along because they were given some uh, freedom when it came to certain lines like how they should be said and improv and such. 
I do wonder how many quotes like from just the battles were ad libbed because I don't know things like that. <laughs> I'm not sure if they would like naturally double line like that. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it's it is funny and very much like something Yuri would say as well. You know, that is said to be an interesting thing with acting is, you know, everyone has their opinions on the character and some episodes don't even align with the director, oddly enough. Um, I personally think it actually works out most of the time pretty nicely when actors are given a lot of creative freedom with characters, if they can kind of understand the characters well themselves. That was so easy. You know, when you maybe in some cases not this one, obviously. I don't know, maybe for the movie, but like, you know, if you've been playing a character a while, then uh, you kind of know how the character should react, and thus you should have input. At least that's my opinion. These guys are new. Fight like I'm gonna die, huh? So we got Knights and we got Leviathan's Claw, which is just delightful. Oh, gosh. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. <laughs> um. I was thinking about it and it's like, nope. Nope. Uh, those guys are actually different, because I think that one that we were just whacking on was a melee attack, or this is a crossbow guy. Um, and it looked like it had some sort of light dark, uh, elemental strength or resistance, but I didn't catch which was the resistance and which was actually the strength. Guess I overdid it. I do like how they do tell you if you basically have TP. Uh, also, by the way, something I should need to do is check some things. Oh, okay. Um, rain is the arc we need for later. So we have rain, so we're good to go in that front. Now it's the problem. Now it's the problem of actually trying to do it. <laughs> So I've seen a couple different strategies for the next boss, I guess I should mention. Uh, some involve basically playing as Yuri, uh, because apparently it involves uh, staggering Jaeger uh, when you... Um, when, like, he has a special animation where you can like stagger him if you hit him with rain, which is actually really cool, because again, you, uh, at... Um, Heracles, Raven basically said something about like being the one ended or something. I don't remember the exact details, but that was like the subtext of it. Um, so I actually kind of like that. That it basically involves Raven finishing him off. You know, it was kind of interesting because Raven was alive with the knights and also the um, what what was it called? The Altos. That's what it was called. Uh, so it's kind of interesting that he has allegiance to Sora to both sides. <laughs> but uh, in actuality, both of those <laughs> conflict with Jaeger, ironically. Yeah, it was interesting. I was reading that uh, the character of Jaeger was actually English in the Japanese dub, so... Uh, yeah, to change that, obviously. Wow, this guy has a lot of health. <laughs> I didn't realize. Don't get in our way. Well, that finished him off. It's, it said Steel Arrowhead, but that just made me think of Splatoon because there's an enemy called the Steelhead. That's notoriously crappy to fight <laughs> uh, if you're not experienced with the game, which, quite frankly, it feels like maybe because they're just had a bad day. A lot of people really aren't. Um, basically, in Splatoon 2, there's a mode called Salmon Run that has like ranks, unless you get matched up in random matches with people of your same rank. Well, because I've had a string of bad luck with randoms, and like, who I get paired with, I've, I'm actually down to like the second uh, rank to the bottom, despite being at the second rank to the top just a couple days ago. Um, yeah, that's some pretty bad luck. So, um, I've been trying to work my way back up, but I'm not having much success because, again, the I'm playing with people who are just kind of starting out and don't quite know how to approach certain enemies. Our weapons are love. Justice, sexuality. Would you stop? <laughs> I had actually seen that one before. 
Okay. Guys, to a save point, considering it's green, I'm not gonna take any chances I'm gonna save. Um, I've been like saving every like two or three parts. The last couple videos I've been saving every part because, well, we're almost at the end of the main story and we still have about 50 more save, save slots to go, so I figured might as well burn through them. It's beautiful. Yeah. I can't believe we're inside a weapon! Carol, wait. Huh? Get out of here. You're too old for hide and seek. Bravo! Bravo, my lads. Splendid! Such keen innovation, such sharpened instincts. Simply splendid! Jaeger! What is it this time? Are you gonna show us how to get to Alexei? Yeah! Oh yeah! I will show you the way. To hell that is! Just which way's the wind blowing with this guy anyway? Have you forgotten, my pretties? We are still sworn enemies, you know. Things were destined to end this way between us. Is this another trap? It's just like you said. We're enemies. So let's do what enemies do. You are correct. Come. Bring it. 